Today we're going to have a look at the 8-bit synth. Now contrary to most other synths in Caustic, this one's a bit different. Rather than using wavetables or oscillators, filters, and envelopes to create a sound, what this actually does is it's a little computer which evaluates an expression to create audio. An expression, which will be showing up in this window here, is a collection of numbers, variables, and operators, which, when evaluated, produces output. In this case, we have one variable to use in our 8-bit synth, and that's T, or time. When you play a note, time grows as the note is being held. So time can be thought of as the duration of the note or its lifetime. So normally when you hold the note down, the lifetime grows, the number that represents the lifetime grows from zero right at the beginning to one, two, three, four, five, and grows and grows and grows up until you let go of the note. That's what would happen normally, but because this is an 8-bit synth, the value we can hold for time actually wraps around once it hits 256. That's the nature of an 8-bit processor, it can only count to 256. So normally, that's not a good thing in computer science, and we want to avoid that. But in this case, we're going to use it to our advantage, because a signal that goes up linearly in counting, drops down, and then comes up again linearly, is a sawtooth. So if the only variable we have in our expression is t, or time, we get a sawtooth. The sawtooth gets pitched to whatever note you play, so it'll follow the melody of the notes you're playing. Now this by itself isn't very interesting, but we get a pretty large expression where we can insert more things to shape our sound. So the operators you get are mostly computer operators, and you don't really have to know what they do or exactly how they work. This synth is really about experimentation, so you know, try things out, don't be afraid. Um, I'll explain them really quickly and you can kind of look into it more if you want. This is the XOR and or, shift left, shift right, addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, modulo, which is the remainder in a division, and parentheses to kind of specify the order you want things to happen. So for example, if we use time like this, we've got our simple sawtooth. So if we were to multiply time by two, we would have time go twice as fast, so we'd get a sawtooth that plays twice as fast, which is the equivalent of jumping up one octave. If we combine this again with a normal time variable, so the OR operator is a good one to combine things. Now we're combining time multiplied by 2 or time. That'll get us two waveforms, the normal waveform plus the one octave up waveform. Similarly, if we want to get a lower note, we can take time and divide it by two, let's say, and that'll give us one octave lower. So that gives us a bit of a different note. You can jump around in the expression by tapping where you want. So if you wanted to add some parentheses, you could do that. If you want to delete things, now the expression turns red. If it's not a valid expression, maybe you haven't balanced your parentheses or a number's too big, or you're trying to multiply by nothing. Um, the, the red expression means something's wrong. Uh, so you use this button to delete. If you want to clear the whole thing really quickly, just long press this button. Now let's have a look at how you'd use an 8-bit synth in your song. There's really actually a few uses for the 8-bit synth, depending on the expression you've got and how you want to use it. For example, you could create a tone that's very chromatic, which means it pitches well to notes. Or you can actually explore the different ways to play the sound in the lower octaves or in higher octaves, and you might find some kind of arpeggio or very, you know, chiptune kind of sound to it. So for example, let's create a simple expression of time shifted up by two or time shifted down by two. Now normally this will give us something like, so we could use it as a note. But if we explore the octave, using the octave knob here, so we get this kind of video game sound effect. So 
you know, maybe you, you want to have this note as a drone and kind of have this sound as a background to your song. Sometimes the tone you produce um, isn't quite matching the note that's played. This is possible because you're manipulating this time and you can manipulate it in a way that the, um, you know, a C4 doesn't line up with a C4 on another note. So you get semis and sense correction for it. Um, most of the time, if you stick to simple expressions, you won't need to use this, but they're there in case you need to correct for, you know, being able to swap this synth for another in one of your songs. Now this A, B knob here switches between the A and B expressions. So right now we've been programming expression A, but you can flip this switch down and you get another expression you can work with. So which one you hear depends on the mix of these two. You can set it somewhere in between, you'll hear both. So let's say you wanna start with expression B and you can type in a new expression here. So if all you want is T for example. And so if we hold a note, blend between the two. If you want to start from expression A when you're doing expression B, just maybe to make a variation on it, you can long press inside the expression window and that'll ask you if you want to copy from program A. So yes is one. And now we've got the same expression there. So let's just modify it a tiny bit. So now we've got a slight variation between the two programs. And so if we swap between them with the blend knob, So then you can automate this knob in your pattern or your song and kind of make the most of it or just, you know, sit it somewhere in the middle and get a very unique sound. Same as all the other synths, when you've, once you've got everything set up the way you like, press the disc icon, type in the name of the preset you want, hit done, you've saved it. And if all of this seems really complicated to you, a good way to start is actually to have a look at some of the ones that come with it and just change some values. Um, this one here is on program B. So we'll just change this maybe. So just play around, change some numbers and you might get a whole different sound, you know, play around in the octaves. Sometimes it's worth exploring in the upper and lower octaves. Maybe it changes the sound from an arpeggio to a chromatic sound. Anyway, this one's a lot of fun, but if you want to explore, it's a great synth. If you want to know exactly and be in control, it's probably not the best synth for you. So there's a lot of presets that come with it and they're worth exploring. Um, but yeah, play around with this synth. It's definitely unique and it's a great addition to Caustic. It's a great fit for you know sounds where you want something really grungy like dubstep or anything where you want really robot dirty sounds. Um, it's really great for that. And you know, I'm sure people will come up with really creative uses for the types of arpeggios and stuff like that as backgrounds or drones. Um, it's a cool little synth.